Buddy? Allie? Hello? Anybody? Why, hello, friends. Welcome to another video here at Ordnance Lab. This video is brought to you by Sportsman's Guide, your one-stop shop for all your outdoor needs. Check them out at www.sportsmansguide.com. So this video right here is kind of what indirectly brought to you by Top Shot Dustin, who radicalized us to join his war on trees with his Top Shot tree service. We've had a whole bunch of wee satch out here at the ranch that we unfortunately let grow out for a while. And one day I woke up and I basically lost it. I'm like, oh my God, we're gonna wipe them out. So I've been going out here and killing them with all kinds of stuff with chemicals and cutting them down. But we've actually hit a couple of spots where explosives are gonna be the best way of getting at them because we can't get the uh, equipment in there to be able to knock it down. And this is also gonna be a shameless plug for our sister company, Texas Explosives and Blasting Services. What we're gonna do is we're gonna show y'all a couple of different ways of taking out trees and we're also going to do some playing around to see if we can bring them down in creative ways. Our explosive range has a ton of trees and that is not an exaggeration. Sean has been slacking on the range maintenance and he's let a ton of these Wiesatch trees proliferate. While removing them we encountered a few that call for the use of high explosives and we figured it would make for an interesting video. So when the jihad against the trees started, originally I just went out with a pair of uh, uh, clippers and went out and cut the little ones that I could and sprayed a little bit of remedy and diesel oil on there to get it to uh, seep down in the roots and kill them because these wee satch are extremely uh, versatile in what they can survive and if you just cut them off at the top they'll come right back and so what I did is after a while I went out there got a Herskavana uh, brush saw which has worked really well I've been using it for the last couple of days uh, maybe we can get them to sponsor us but what happened yesterday I was trying to cut this really big one down and the saw actually failed after I'd been using it for a whole bunch of days. So I'm not gonna ding that on the company. And so I wasn't able to fully cut it through. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna see if we can get the deck cord wrapped up in there and see if that will actually knock it down. We saw in the previous video where the deck cord wasn't able to bring the tree down on its own, but with it in there like that, I'm hoping it'll kind of just push it over, but we'll see what happens. Our first victim is this tough little guy here. Sean already started to cut into it with the brush saw and it cooked the blade. So time to exact revenge upon it with high explosives. An eye for an eye or something like that. Sean wrapped about 20 feet of deck cord around it where the cut is. The idea here is to concentrate the explosion around where the tree is the weakest. Since the cut has already eaten away at the tree, it should snap off right here. Theoretically anyways. All right, so I got about 20 feet of deck cord in there and the goal, oh, well, hello, Allie. Thank you for joining us. Who was just in the mud. We haven't got any rain. So the, our pond is like really low and just a bunch of mud and Allie reeks like the stock pond. But anyways, I digress, I'm discussing Allie. What's gonna happen, like I said, 20 feet of deck cord. I got it in there as much as I could. And the goal with it is that we're gonna have that explosion that again, my, in my history major math here, is that I'm hoping that the detonation will loosen it up on the other side where it hasn't been cut while also giving a pushing effect on the part that has been cut. I'd like to, I wanted to get it in there further, but unfortunately I didn't make a big enough cut in there to be able to cram the deck cord in there too far. But with 20 feet of deck cord, we'll hopefully be able to knock this thing down. If not, well, we'll figure out more limitations of deck cord because we've already seen that before with Top Shot Dustin when we tried to take those trees down with the deck cord and it didn't work out. So, the deck cord method wasn't as effective as Sean hoped. Deck cord is great, but it is not the best choice for cutting trees. You can see here that it simply blew away the bark and exposed the inner layers of the tree. Not good enough though. As Alzar from Futurama would say, time to take things up a notch. 
Using a chainsaw, we cut a chunk out of the tree big enough to stuff a one-third pound helix charge into it. The idea here is to divert most of the force into the tree and take it down. All right, so originally we we're gonna try to drill a hole in there and stick it in there. Unfortunately, that didn't work out because this wood is really hard to get into. So Jake grabbed a chainsaw. I felt like it was a early 1980s Miami and he was, you know, what was his name? Hector going after Angel with the chainsaw. If you've never seen that movie or you don't know what I'm talking about, oh my God, I need to go watch more movies, but I digress. What we're gonna do is, uh, like I said, Jake cut out this huge notch. I admit it would have been easier to just cut down the tree than to cut that notch in there. But once we were committed, we were committed, we're gonna blow this thing up. So we put it in there and the goal with it, it's gonna be far enough in there where enough of the energy is gonna be directed into actually uh, knocking the tree over and not just deflect it off uh, the side. So we'll see what happens. Oh, but before we do that, make sure that I say that this right here is gonna be a one third pound of Helix Explosives. Helix is a binary explosives. It's kind of, man, man, we kind of a gateway drug. We've moved beyond it, but we had some of this stuff just laying around. So we'll go ahead and finish off using it here in this video. Looks like we knocked it over. This method was far more effective and for good reason. First, we used more explosive. Secondly, the force of the explosion was directed better towards cutting the tree. The tree just missed hitting our GoPro set up here. Unfortunately, the screen protector got cracked from the blast, so it's time to order another replacement screen. You would think GoPro would sponsor us by now by the amount of GoPros we go through, but you can see the tree was easily taken down with a small charge, as it was used in an efficient manner. Now we have access to the roots and can spray the herbicide to totally terminate the tree. Well, Allie came over here to protest. She hasn't been fed yet, because it's what? seven o'clock and someone hasn't been fed yet and you've been reek like death and sulfur and God knows what else. Uh, have, have fun, Allie. Anyways, so you can see what the explosives did. We were hoping to get it to go that way, but instead it just split it open. And you can see what that, just a little bit of a one third pound of high explosives was able to do. Now this wee satch, if you don't have it where you're at, thank God, because it is just a nasty tree and it's extremely hard to kill. And it is literally a hard wood that is really resilient to being cut up with the chainsaw or anything else. And to kill it, you really have to get it either down in the root system with chemicals and kill it off. I use Remedy and diesel oil. Um, or you have to actually physically remove the entire root system, which is a massive pain to do that. So we're gonna add on a little bit of Remedy here to kill that off. But again, you're able to see what happens whenever you have the explosives buried in the tree. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go out there and see what happens when you just stick the explosives next to the tree without any sort of effect to get it into the tree. So what we got right here which is one kilogram or 2.2 pounds of Jake's Gemini explosives, which is much better than the Helix combination. We wrapped it with a little bit of deck cord as a boost in charge. What we're going to do is we're going to set it right here next to this tree. It's smaller than the other one that we had, but we're going to show that it really won't work. Well, we don't think it's going to work quite as well as the Helix because the Helix was actually, again, buried in there into the tree. So it was able to exert all of its energy on the tree because the force always follows the path of least resistance. With this right here, there's going to be all these other ways for the energy to be dissipated. So I think we're gonna mess the tree up. The tree obviously won't like it. I'll be happy that the tree won't like it, but we're not gonna get a catastrophic effect like we did with the Helix. So we'll see what happens. So we were supposed to send this back to Boss Firearms in College Station, Texas a couple of weeks ago. We opened our blasting box and some ADHD moron like myself forgot to send it to him. So our thanks to uh, Boss Firearms in College Station for letting us use it. So let's have a bang. Yeah, that worked. One kilo of explosive produces a very large explosion and totally sheared the tree off like it was nothing. Some of the trees have survived worse and we did not expect this one to get nuked so easily. Not that we are complaining. Another one bites the dust. We expected this tree to be a little bit tougher. Well, me of little faith, and I guess Jake of little faith also, we thought that right there wouldn't really do much to the tree except for, yeah, screw up the bark and whatnot. But a lot of the effects of explosives are dependent upon the tree. What kind of tree, its age, 
how much water they've had, a bunch of other things. And I'm sure that we can find an arborologist, I think it's the right term in the comment section, who would tell us all about explosives and the effects of trees, but I don't know anything about it because I'm a history major. But anyways, back to the lecture at hand, you can see that the explosives just totally annihilated the tree in an unexpected way. And this right here shows, uh, we'll brag a little bit for the, uh, our Gemini explosives that Jake made. It blasted it all to hell, but again, we didn't expect that. Um, typically, whenever we have explosives just on the outside of a tree, it, it really doesn't do much. But in this instance, it wiped it out totally. So what we're going to do next is, well, we're going to go get some Mexican food because I'm starving Marvin and I'm getting hangry because uh, we haven't eaten all day. Um, but tomorrow morning, we'll recock and we'll resume our war on trees. We cleaned up the range for the evening as it was getting dark and Sean was getting hangry as usual. He gets pretty cranky when he's hungry. As the sun sets, it marks the end of the day, saving the bigger booms for the next day. Well, welcome to day two of Ordnance Lab's multi-day project. What we're going to be doing now is we've got this massive tree right here. So I guess the Death Star of Wesatch, for lack of a better term. And it's got uh, trunks going everywhere. It's just got a massive amount of growth. And where it's at, we couldn't even get a dozer in here if we wanted to. I guess theoretically I could like put a chain around it and try to yank it out with my tractor, but actually getting in there and physically breaking up the parts of the thing, man, we'd be here all day long with chainsaws. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take another kilogram of Gemini, we're gonna stick it down in the middle, and we're gonna see how well it works for blasting it open and actually breaking these parts out where then I can just pull it out on its own without having to break it up. And hopefully that'll solve our problem. This massive Wesatch tree that Sean dubbed the Death Star was too darn big for us to manually chop up. South Texas is basically an oven right now, so we would have roasted cutting this tree up into smaller pieces. So we stuffed a kilo charge of Gemini into the center of the tree. While cleaning out the Nexus, we noticed that we could fit more explosive. So we rigged up a tandem charge, making it a cool 1.5 kilos of explosive. This ought to do the trick. More explosives always means more effective and more fun. The charge went off with an awesome blast, but the Death Star amazingly wasn't too heavily broken apart. Enough for us to separate it into smaller pieces and poison the root system which is sufficient for the given task. It also sent embers everywhere which is a massive issue. We haven't had rain in weeks, so the range is as dry as a British comedy. We ran around stomping out the embers to avoid a brush fire. Well, we seem to have destroyed the Death Star, well partially destroyed the Death Star of we sat. you can see where it blasted this stuff out and it just moved a bunch of rock. We were able to see actually just chunks flying everywhere. That's why we had a good 300 meter standoff. And one of the things that we noticed that we have a bunch of smoldering embers that we actually didn't realize how dry this uh, wood is. And we haven't normally had that where it starts to fire or where there's smoldering embers. But that's why one of the major things to do with explosives, make sure you have firefighting capabilities on hand. We got two uh, water fire extinguishers to go put out fires if they were to start. But again, you've got to always be prepared for stuff happening. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to destroying some more Wesatch by drilling a hole in one of them and knocking it over. Well, hopefully knocking it over. Our next victim is this guy. The perfect candidate for us to drill into the tree and stuff another helix charge into its trunk. This will allow us to maximize the force of the explosion against the tree. So Jake just spent about 30 minutes and two batteries worth of stuff on a drill trying to drill this hole out right here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna show y'all a one third pound of helix charge put in here. How much more efficient that's gonna be than having to go out there and you know dig down underneath it and all that stuff or just putting it next to the tree. We saw the other day when we had the one kilogram charge or 2.2 pound one that went off and annihilated the tree. We kinda think we got lucky on that. I think with this right here, by sticking this one third pound of explosive in there, we'll get a much more efficient effect, but we'll see what happens. Much like in Pokemon, that attack was very effective. It split one half of the tree right off the trunk and left the other part barely attached. 
We can easily remove the attached part and poison the root system from here. All right, that worked really well. You can see that one third pound of explosives blasted off part of the tree right here and then knocked over the rest of this stuff, making it much easier. This is a significantly larger tree than the one that we had before. We used a one kilo, one oh, kilo ton, I wish, one kilogram or 2.2 pounds of explosives. This was just one third of a pound and it blasted it open really well. So I have to come back here with the chainsaw to get rid of this right here. And one of the things with Wesatch to make sure because it's so resilient, you want to make sure that you, again, pour chemicals on there to make sure you kill the root system because otherwise it'll probably come back. Hey guys, and welcome to our little tree hideout. Well, temporary hideout right now. We're enjoying the shade because it's about to get blown up. First part is we're going to use this shape charge against this trunk that's running horizontally or parallel to the ground because Sean asked me a question, what would happen if we set off a shape charge against the wood? And I'm like, I don't know. I've never set them off against trees. Normally we just tack a lot of explosives and uh, against the trunk uh, in a shearing like force. You put a little bit on this side, a little bit side and cut it in half. Uh, or a ton on one side as you did, we saw earlier with the one kilo charge against that little tree. Or uh, you bury it under the ground or put it inside the tree, but eh, never the shape charge. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this wine bottle shape charge that we was going to use for a different project, but it never came to fruition. So it's been just sitting around here collecting dust not living up to its full potential. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna load this up with 350 grams of Gemini, stick it right onto this trunk, and see if it punches through the wood. Uh, do you think it's gonna punch through the wood? Do you think it's not? Be sure to put uh, your, uh, your beliefs, or your, uh, your, your, your projections on into the comments, and then go back and see if you were right. Uh, I'm gonna say that it doesn't go through because this is a pretty thick tree trunk, but hey, sometimes I'm wrong. You know, I, <laughs> I can admit that. So let's set this thing up and blow it up. This horizontal trunk is the perfect candidate to test a shape charge. It's fairly thick and provides plenty of meat to test the performance of the wine bottle shape charge. We use 350 grams of Gemini as usual. We had to censor the video as we don't want YouTube thinking we are showing you all how to make devices. The charge was placed dead center to the trunk and stabilized to ensure it doesn't fall over. We then quickly got to our safety position to set the charge off. All right, moment of truth. Let's see if this worked. Oh, look at that. There's the punch hole or the entrance hole. All right, let's look under here. Yeah, it went right through. Oh, we have little faith. Yeah, so I was wrong, but hey, I got no problem admitting it. This is about, we measured out approximately 16 inches of wood, which is a large chunk of wood to go through. And despite that, it went right through, no problem, and shot down uh, into the ground here. Of course, we don't have a punch hole in the ground. The shape charge obviously dissipated as it go through the wood and went all over the place. But it has a really clean hole, as you can see in the video. That's really impressive. Uh, I mean, wood, yeah, is very durable and is phenomenal at defeating uh, penetrating objects such as bullets or in this case shape, uh, project, shape charged projectiles but you know it, it can only stop so much plus I don't know what the age of this trunk is it might be a little dry so that obviously that matters a little bit if it was say wetter or newer wood also depending on also the tree certain woods are harder than others so if this was say something balsa wood I would not expect balsa wood to defeat a shape charge no matter how thick the shape char the, the balsa wood is but still pretty awesome but uh, now that we got that testing out of the way let's go on to blowing up another other tree only in a different way. Alright, so we showed y'all a couple of different ways of doing it. We've uh, put deck cord around stuff. We've hollowed out the part of a tree and put it, the explosives in there and blew it apart. We also showed that you can overwhelm trees with just the amount of explosives that you use, especially with Jake's Gemini and also Jake's shaped charge worked awesome. But what we're going to do is we're going to show y'all what happens when you actually bury it underneath the tree. Luckily, we got a little washout here that's opened up the root system for this Wesatch, which is a pretty good sized tree. I'd say about 20 feet tall. And what we're going to do is we're going to put some explosives underneath it and we're going to see if we can lift it totally out of the ground and should be a pretty great way of killing this thing instead of having to go cut it down. This tree is a perfect choice to stuff an explosive charge underneath and send it flying into the air. The base is exposed due to water erosion, making it easier for us to get beneath the tree. Sean first removed some of the roots that were in the way of the digging process. Once the roots were removed, we dug out a hole that was just deep enough to send the tree flying outward using about 1.2 kilos of liquid explosive. 
We then cover the charge with dirt to reduce the amount of explosion being blown out and directed towards the tree. All right, make it happen. That sort of worked. The blast did rupture the root system, but wasn't strong enough to break them all. These wee thatch trees have wicked root structures, and it needs a little bit more oomph to get it out of the ground, apparently. As Tim the Toolman Taylor would say, time for more power. Well, that was a hell of a lot of force, but it was interesting. Remember I set it off, um, it actually wasn't that loud. We were a good 300 meters away, and I actually wondered whether we had a full debt or not, but we got up here on it, and clearly the whole thing detonated. You can see all the energy that was dispersed, but of course you can't really see it because it's, well, we're on the internet, not in real life, but it was uh, much quieter because we'd actually tamped the load down there, and so it was buried, so it didn't have that same sort of noise that it would have if it was a surface debt. But, because we always want to make sure that we actually annihilate things and to entertain y'all, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and recock tomorrow, and what we'll do is we're going to put even more explosives underneath there, and we'll try to actually get it all the way out of the ground, because of course, you know, we would want to end like that with just a, a little hole like that and some cracks. We want to actually get this thing in the air, so we'll see y'all then. Well, there's actually going to be a bonus round, because someone in the comments section uh, said that they wanted to see a linear shaped charge. Well. We had one of these about one pound linear shaped charges sitting around, so we figured we'd include that as a bonus for the video because we love our viewers. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this linear shaped charge, we're gonna put it up here against the tree, and we're gonna see if it knocks it down. I think that it's actually gonna be able to shear it and send a bunch of stuff flying out at the other end, but we'll see. We identified a tree with the right dimensions for the shaped charge. The diameter has to be the same or less than the length of our linear shaped charge. Similar concept as a conical shaped charge like the wine bottle one, but spread out over a finite length. The core is filled with a high performance plastic explosive like RDX, PTN, or HMX. Its shape resembles that of a tasty bar of Toblerone chocolate. Damn, those things are addictive. How cool would it be if they had an explosive version? It's something the Swiss would totally do. Dare to dream, <laughs> dare to dream. We attach the shape charge near the base of the tree so it will shear it off nicely and we can poison the root system. Let's see how well it does. All right, so we'll see how that linear shape charge goes. The linear shape charge almost cut the tree cleanly off the base. A bit was left still attached, so it managed to defeat the penetrator. The top of the tree also got caught on another tree, preventing it from breaking on its own weight. Still, it got the job done. Sean attempted to knock it over by hand, but with no success. Where's that tall Nordic dude, Brian, not Cody, when you need him? All right, well, that right there almost went all the way through. You can see a, this catastrophic damage down here, and it broke this limb right here in half, and this one, eh, it looks like it, uh, it's, the reason it may not have fell is because it's caught up in another tree up in there, so that could be why it didn't fall down, because there's really not much left here, but this right here is much faster than using that damn brush saw. So now we're going to move on to the main event. All right, so here we are for the denouement, as they say in France or also in Louisiana. What we've got here is 6.6 .6 pounds or three kilograms for our European friends or our Canadian friends. Say hi to the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. What we're going to do is we're going to put it down underneath here, and this is going to be a big bang. Previously, we only used 2.2 pounds or one kilogram, so we're tripling the load on this, and it's going to make a nice bang that'll hopefully throw this tree in the air and annihilate this damn wee satch for us. I feel a bit like on, but was that true lies when they take the nuke and they, you know, put it in the ground and put all the concrete on top of it. It's going to be similar to this, just on a smaller scale. Well, hold on to your butts.
Once again, more explosives means more effective. That seemed to do the trick as the tree was pushed right out of the ground. The root system didn't stand a chance with this charge. Once again, our problems were solved with high explosives. All right, well, I think we killed it off. It blew it a good 10 meters or so from where we had it. And it's sitting on, the tree's actually sitting on top of the hole that we blasted. So what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna try to get it out with the UTV, cause this is too heavy to get out by hand. And hopefully we'll be able to check out the actual blast radio or the blast crater, but you've got a bunch of roots coming up like graboids from tremors. So it's kind of cool to see that stuff. You don't really see for a tree, um, even for going out there and cutting them down, you hardly ever see those roots like that. We had the convenience of the mule and its winch to drag the tree out. Doing this by hand was not going to happen. There's no sense working harder when you can work smarter. So we hooked it up and dragged it out like an obese corpse found in a cheap motel. Ah, oh, it's a gravel, it's a gravel, Allie, help me, ah! Allie just stood there and did nothing. Thanks, Allie, glad that you'll be there for me if I get attacked by a graboid. Well, y'all can see that right, right here is one hell of a hole that we blew. You can see these roots right here that were brought up from underneath it. And like, it pretty much looks like that there's no, there was never a tree here almost, except for the roots right here. Jake did a great job with the explosive pack. Oh, now Allie wants to come. If I was being attacked by a graboid, I'd be totally toast. Come on, Allie, come on. Good girl. All right, yes, you can come in here and sniff and all that stuff and you read terribly. Anyways, back to the lecture at hand. Um, it, you can see how the explosives work for getting underneath it like that. It was able to move just a fantastic amount of tree and earth and all that stuff and just break out all this this dirt right here. Extremely impressive and great job to Jake with the explosives. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if y'all do need some sort of blasting services here in the Texas area, um, remember our sister company, Texas Explosives and Blasting Services. We can take out beaver dams, trees, buildings, well, nothing like in cities or anything like that, but we can take out all kinds of different things, so make sure to check out their website, and we'll see y'all next time.